Hey, it's Noel coming to you with a quick video here. I'm sure most of you have seen a lot of the news that's come out recently based off a Dallas Fed report about a housing bubble and the irrational exuberance, which I really kind of liken that to a uh, Robert Schiller view on the economic narratives. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about the economic narrative. Everybody wants to look for this housing bubble or crash to happen. While we may be in a bubble in some sense, there's affordability issues, the rent to income has gone out of whack in some markets, um, but then not again in some others. So you know, we've got inflation, we've got supply chain issues, we have all of these things, along with a huge amount of stimulus that was put into the economy that allowed a lot of people to be able to push the rents up um, when they normally wouldn't be, a lot because of the lack of homes and and the rents were going up up anyway as far and prices so while the dallas fed talked about a lot of cracks and a lot of concern in the housing market they also end it just like most that have the big headline that because of the dynamics and the credit profile of the buyers and it was interesting because they were talking about rent income the rent you know rent income they're talking about uh uh, payment to income, but they really said at the end, you know, higher credit standards, a lot of equity in homes, the values have gone up, which have, which while it's made it more unaffordable, it's helped those uh, with, with equity. But then we have some other things that's happening where you have interest rates have gone up. So, you know, when I look at this, I've read a few things about this, and this is also my opinion. Now there's a lot of people who may not want to sell because you know, they've got an interest rate at 2.8%. If they sell and they're going to have an interest rate at 5% or maybe even 6% if it goes up, which is really still historically low, they're not as motivated to sell their house. So it's funny because you have these different levers that get pulled in, in with interest rates and the economy and housing and supply and demand and all this different stuff that will affect whether someone wants to sell a home. Um, whether someone can afford to buy a home, whether someone can afford rent. I think that, you know, we are, and I've been saying this for years, there is a, an affordable housing problem in this country and building more apartments does not solve it. Maybe all of these people aren't meant to be homeowners, but many of them are meant to live in a home. You know, when you have the traditional, and it's been happening every, gener every generation of people you know, younger, graduating from college, moving to the city, starting a career, then they start a family, maybe they still live in an apartment, possibly, then, you know, they get married, they live in an apartment, then they start a family, and they want to move to a house, and many times they move to the suburbs, and this cycle has been happening for a long time, so when everybody's surprised that you have more people that want to move to the suburbs, they start families, I kind of laugh, because it's been going on for a while. Now, what we do have right now, which is very unusual, is we have a record number of millennials, it's been happening for the last three years, that are moving into the housing market, some of them were holding back, now you have inflation, you have price appreciation, you have rent appreciation, and you have a lot of people that are still scared from the last housing crash, so they always default saying, oh my God, housing's about to crash. Well, the Dallas Fed said, eh, hold on a second. It's, if there is a downturn or a slowdown or even a depreciation, it's going to be very mild, it'll be very regionally concentrated, and it's not going to be a wholesale across the country. So as Logan from Housing Wire always says, the foreclosure bros, the housing crash bros, it's not happening right now. So take a step back, look at what somebody can afford now, look at where the appreciation may slow down. I don't know when, I think May is predicted to be one of the highest appreciating markets or appreciating months year over year and record. There's still a lack of supply. There's still a lot of buyers in the market that wanna buy. There are investors that are out there buying homes. But one thing I wanna note about the investors,